This example is to show you how to create a stem and leaf design, or just a stem plot of the data. Um, this is test scores, and what we're going to do is look for the stem, which in this case we're going to call the tens place of the number, and the leaf, which is going to be the ones place of the number. So the first thing you do in a stem and leaf plot is you go ahead and um, make a vertical line down. The vertical line isn't necessary, but it's useful to separate your stems from your leaves. On this side, we're going to put the tens place, which is the stem. On this side, we're going to put the leaves, which are the ones place. So looking through our data, I noticed that 47 seems to be our lowest stem, or 40 seems to be our lowest stem, and our highest stem seems to be in the 90s. So we're going to go ahead and start here with just the tens place, so just the 4, the 5, the 6, the 7, the 8, and then the 9. Now all you do is go through and look at each of the numbers and see what its ones place is and what its tens place. So the 87 would belong here. You would then put the 7 next to the 87 on the other side of the line where the leaves go. The 53 is in the stem of 5, and then you put the 3 here. Notice this 3 and the 7 are lined up. The 74 means that the stem was 7, and the leaf is 4. 82 has a stem of 8 and a leaf of 2. I tried to make these nicely equally spaced at this point. 76 means we have a leaf of 6 for our stem of 7. Notice again the 6 and the 2 are lined up. 93, 68, 47, 88, 85, 71. Again, notice the seven and I mean sorry, the one and the eight are nicely lined up. 79, the nine and the five should be lined up. 95, 80, 65, 93. 86, 87, 63, and 74. So this is pretty much your stem and leaf design. The problem is, is that if I just showed this to somebody, they wouldn't know what these numbers represent. So one other thing you have to do is do a legend. I like to put it at the top. You put a 4 and a 7 there. It doesn't matter which numbers you use, but I like to use the numbers that are right at the top usually. And then I say that that equals a 47. If there were units on this, I would then put the units. Um, I should have actually put in a title, but I also noticed that my stems are kind of jumbled up. They're not in nice order. So we're going to actually come over here and create a new stem and leaf plot. This way we can actually put our data in. I mean, sorry, our, lab our title in. So test scores. And then we'll start again, but this time we're just going to make sure that our stems and our leaves are in nice order. So for the stem of 47 and 53, there was nothing we had to do here. But for the stem of 6, we notice that our numbers are actually in reverse order. So we're going to put the 3 first, the 5 second, and then the 8 third. For the stem of 7, we're going to start with the 1, then 4 comes next. There are two 4s to include both, then the 6, and then the 9. The stem of 8 starts with 0, then 2, then 5, then 6, then 7, and another 7, and then 8. And the stem of 9 has two 3s and then a 5. Again, I want my legend of that a 4 and a 7 means 47. That way anybody can reproduce the data. The nice thing about a stem and leaf plot is that you actually don't lose the data, but you can kind of see the shape. We can see that a lot more people got in the 80s 
Um, it is skewed to the left because there's a lot of lower grades and not as many, um, the, sorry, there's a lot of small lower grades and then most of the people were in the upper grades. These heights, these are much higher than these, so we'd say it was skewed left. Um, if you could turn your paper sideways, you would actually be able to see basically a histogram of this data and kind of see the skewness going on. Um, but you haven't lost the data like you do in a histogram. So that's the nice thing about a stem and leaf plot. And that's how you create one.